how beautiful it would be if banks can talk to each other. A customer having multiple accounts like bank accounts, loan accounts, mortgages, credit cards, etc. with different financial entities can link all the accounts and see a consolidated view of all her transactions. She can view her account details vis-a-vis -vis payments due and have a consolidated view of everything. This is made possible with open banking. Let's see what it is in detail in this video. Open banking enables interoperability. So interoperability meaning that two banks or multiple banks or financial institutions can securely talk to each other allowing banks, third-party payment service and other financial service providers to access banking transactions and other data from banks and financial institutions. So what it helps us is promote competition, innovation and improve customer choice. Open banking allows customers to have more control over their financial data and the services they use. This ultimately leads to more diverse and customer-centric banking and financial ecosystem. So some of the very important use cases I'm trying to describe here, let's start. Personalized financial advice. So FinTech apps can analyze users' financial data to provide tailored financial advice and product recommendations. So if everything is related and linked to each other, uh, a banking application can analyze all the data with respect to customer and give an advice. For example, retirement savings is one advice they can give or how much savings per month they need to do to achieve some goals like education for the child. So all those things can be done with respect to data analytics if this uh, data is linked and available. Credit scoring and loan approval. So fintech companies can access users financial data to provide more accurate credit scores and assess credit worthiness this helps streamline loan approval process and potentially offers better terms to the borrowers personal financial uh, management apps so pfm apps help users aggregate data from multiple bank accounts and financial institutions providing a comprehensive view of their financial situation. Users can track spending, create budgets, set financial goals. Account aggregation. Open banking allows users to see their accounts, credit cards, loans, investments in a single dashboard, making it much more easier to manage their finances. Payment initiation services. So users can make payment directly from their bank accounts without the need to go to the bank. Uh, this is uh, often very useful and can be used for online shopping, bill payment and peer to peer transfers. For example, you can transfer your from your bank account to your friend's bank account directly and within minutes. Instant bank account verification. Uh, businesses can use open banking to verify the authenticity of customers bank account before processing payments or setting up direct debits so let's say that you are making a payment for your uh, bills let's say electricity bill uh, so when you add the account the account can be immediately verified that it belongs to you before processing any payments thereby avoiding any uh, wrong wrongly typed information Cross-border payments. Open banking can facilitate cheaper and faster cross-border payments by connecting to different banks and payment networks. So these are some of the uh, use cases. A consolidated list is presented here. I would not go through the consolidated list, but the details are mentioned here. You can go through it. Now, what are the important aspects of open banking? So data sharing, data sharing between different banks. Open banking allows individuals and businesses to give consent for their financial data, such as bank information, transaction history and payment details to be securely shared with authorized third party providers. API, so API is uh, a mechanism by which software 
is becoming more open. You have the APIs to access data from software. So open banking institution relies on standardized APIs, application programming interfaces that financial institutions make available to authorized third party providers. These APIs will uh, help these TPPs to access customer data while adhering to security and privacy standards. Consent mechanisms. Uh, user consent is a fundamental so you have a consent mechanism also uh, customers must explicitly grant permission for their data to be accessed and shared with uh, with other entities competition and innovation open banking fosters competition by allowing new and existing financial service providers to offer innovative products and services improved access to financial services open banking can help uh, individuals and businesses gain easier access to financial services and products, including personal finance, management apps, budgeting tools, loan marketplaces, etc. Regulatory oversight. Many countries have implemented regulatory framework to govern open banking with the aim of ensuring data security and fair competition. Regulations like European Union's PSD2 and UK's open banking initiatives. These are some of the examples. Security and privacy. Open banking places strong emphasis on the security and privacy of customer data. Account information services and payment initiation services. Uh, these are the two main type of services. AIS provides uh, access and aggregate financial data from various accounts, while PIS provides uh, a payment on behalf of customers and global adoption so uh, open banking concepts are being adopted in different parts of the world uh, so this also means that you can do a cross border banking transaction if both the banks are subscribing to some kind of open banking standards now if we see this that we have uh, different standards which support open banking in usa and canada there is a standard called fdx financial data exchange uh, which is driving open banking adoption in us and canada by providing standard tools and uh, for secure and reliable customer data access so there are different other standards also which are available across the world which are listed here i'll not go through the detail so uh, so in essence open banking is very important to foster innovation and competition and it, it enhances customer ease uh, to a very very great level and customer can utilize his data with respect to banking and do analysis on th that data and find meaningful information which can be very helpful for him or her in a long term so open banking is the way to go and many banking institutions are already subscribing uh, to open banking lastly we'll see the site of fdx to see what banks are subscribing to that and let's see what other details are there in the fdx site so this is the fdx site and as we were discussing earlier usa and canada financial associations are linked to it and it gives you all the details of which institutions are subscribing to these standards and there is a FAQ also which is mentioned here. If you go through it, you would be able to know what exactly is FDX. FDX is a non-profit organization operating in US and Canada that is dedicated to unifying financial services ecosystem around a common interoperable and royalty-free technical standard. So basically it is a standard which is meant to enhance the adoption of open banking. And all these details are mentioned here, which you can go through later. The other thing is it has some resources which are there which you can go through and uh, there are some white papers and guides so we were discussing about apis we have information on api we have information on the fdx itself with this i'll close the video thank you very much